minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command engine start, 2, 1. as she reaches her altitude. You can follow along on the bottom left corner of your screen. We have confirmed max Q. That was the, uh, the most intense part of flight on the rocket. Maximum dynamic pressure, as we call it. And a nice, clean burn on that BE-3 engine. Go, baby, go. All right, next highlight on her way to space, main engine cutoff, or MECO as we call it. Now, if you and I were flying on New Shepard right now, we're gonna feel those Gs come on. We're gonna, it peaks at about 3.5 Gs or so. But as we've talked about on uh, other webcasts, in the entire flight, you peak at about five Gs, but just momentarily on descent, in fact. And there it is, main engine cut off. Great job on its ascent by that BE-3 engine, a liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen engine. Design testing and proven here at Blue Origin. All right, we're looking for separation here between the capsule and the booster. And separation is confirmed. Those payloads are getting a nice ride this morning, experiencing those clean micro G's. And again, if you and I were up there, we'd be doing those somersaults, maybe a superwoman across the capsule, and I for sure would be gazing out those huge, beautiful windows. Now, as you can see from the altimeter, we're still climbing up towards space. But the speed is coming down, obviously, because we have turned off the engine. And in fact, you'll know when we hit Apogee, when the speedometer on the top right corner of your screen goes to zero. And there we go. We have passed the Kármán line of 100 kilometers, or about 328,000 feet. But continue our climb here, looking for Apogee. There you see the capsule on the left and the booster on the right side of your screen. All right, and we have an unofficial number of about 343,000 feet. Congratulations, New Shepard team, on your sixth flight to space. Now let's bring her home.
All right, coming up shortly here, New Shepard is going to re-enter the atmosphere, which means, of course, that it's actually going to have air pressure for those control surfaces to push against to make sure that she guides her right, it, she's guided right back to the, uh, what we call our, our north landing pad, again, just two miles north of where she's taken off from. But shortly here, we're going to look for the wedge fins to deploy. And the wedge fins are out. All things looking nominal. You may recall those wedge fins are housed up in the what we call our ring fin. As the rocket's coming back down, the air is flowing through that ring fin, centralizing the pressure, and that keeps the rocket nice and stable and straight as it's coming back down to land. Of course, the wedge fins also help with the stability of the rocket as she descends back home to Earth. Next, we'll be looking for the drag brakes to deploy. Those are also housed in the ring fin, and that's going to dramatically cut the, uh, the speed of the rocket. They, in fact, do most of the work in uh, cutting the speed of the rocket as she comes back into land. And again, then we will look for the firing of the BE-3 rocket, I mean, sorry, the BE-3 engine, that is, that will slow it to just four or five miles an hour and as she touches down. There are the drag brakes.